tiếng Anh cao cấp. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today I'm going to talk about discover yourself. Ever since the accelerated development of human civilization, perpetual scientific discoveries of nature had accompanied mankind all along the journey. It was by discovering the world around us that human beings have been able to lead a more sophisticated life. However, as G.K. Chesterton once said, one may understand the cosmos but never the eagle. The self is more distant than any star. Thus, our life is a journey of unrelenting efforts to discover more of ourselves. When I was six, I constantly pictured myself as an elegant and skilled pianist, rendering Chopin's Nocturne beautifully on the stage, receiving warm applause after my performance. However, as I furthered my piano lessons, it was hard to be oblivious of my non-gifted skills. Sometimes I couldn't help but have this feeling of despair when I woke up to the reality and discovered that my goal was unrealistic. Brutal, but real. It was the first time I had discovered that I couldn't have it all. When I was 12, I thought the coolest job in the entire universe was to be a surgeon. I spent hours and hours watching the drama Grey's Anatomy and couldn't help falling in love with the kind of life those doctors lead on the screen. I was utterly mesmerized by the scalpel and all those fancy medical terms they use. However, I stopped dreaming about being a surgeon when I discovered that it was the idea of being a surgeon that appealed to me, not what it truly was. As a result, the dream ended and I discovered some more about myself. This year, I turned 16, and I could proudly say I do not dream to be, but ascertain to pursue being a lawyer in the future. Since junior high school, I had always been awarded the most eloquent debater in every single debate I participated in. I can not only think logically, but also deliver my thoughts promptly. My huge interest in philosophy also adds to my reasoning whenever I try to argue on something equivocal. Being aware of the obstacles and hardships on the way to becoming a great lawyer never panics me, for the simple reason that I have this faith and passion in what I'm aspiring after. G.K. Chesterton was absolutely correct. The most complicated part of comprehending the world is the study of the somehow smaller world, ourselves. I've subsequently realized that growing up is the process of discovering ourselves. We get to know what we truly are and become who we dream to be. As we shape ourselves and as we shape our lives, we gradually become more aware of our limits and potentials and consequently learn to adjust to what's out there. And by that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm proud to say that I have discovered part of myself, still discovering today and definitely a lot more in the future. I will always keep this embedded in my heart. Things do not change. We do. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, here is your topic for impromptu speech. Mm -hmm. This is kind of challengeable. <laughs> you know, nowadays, many students fall in love in high school. <laughs> Do you support this behavior? And will such love relationships last long? And uh, is it good for students' future development? Your idea, please. Okay, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say that this is a rather prevalent phenomenon these days. We could see that a lot of students around me are having this kind of young puppy love. And I think it's utterly normal for them because I can understand why they do this. They're trying to seek recognition from the other sex instead of from academic success. However, I am utterly against it because I think it's utterly detrimental to our future development and also it will never last long. First of all is how we can understand that we're still rather immature psychologically at this current stage. And the most important thing for love is that we cannot actually thoroughly understand what love is. And for the most important part is that I could see students around me having puppy love as simply messing around, seeking pleasure instead of making commitments. And because of, because of this kind of flimpy, flimsy aptitude, I think all they could do is to mess around. And that's why uh, puppy love dies in the blink of an eye. And for example, I could see Mary would be dating David on the first day of 
November. However, two days later, she's kissing, day, she's kissing Tom on the other side of campus. And that's very normal these days. And secondly, I think it's because uh, for puppy love, it's very detrimental to our future development because uh, th at this particular stage of our time, what we should do is to allocate our valuable time to studying and participating in extracurricular activities in order to go to a wonderful college in the future. And time is scarce. Because of that, I think it was Shakespeare who once said, love is blind. And a lot of uh, young students sort of lost themselves in this, in this procedure. And that is very, very costly. And so, in conclusion, I would like to view this problem from the view of economics. When we're making rational choices, we should consider the marginal benefits and marginal cost of this particular problem. And in the case of puppy love, I see the marginal cost exceeds the marginal benefit a lot. And that is the reason why I think this is something that should not be approbated. And for the case of those people who are thinking that true love might be lost through this way, I would say that true love can wait. Because if not, it will not be true love at all. And we'll have nothing to lose. And that's the reason why I have this kind of opinion. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My question has to do with faith and passion. Okay. In your speech, you say that at various times in your life, you had the faith and the passion yes. for a specific career, as you saw at that time. What makes now different? You feel that the way you want to go professionally is to be a great lawyer. But young people nowadays tend to have a thought one day to be this and the next day to be that. So what makes now different from the way you were before? Okay, thank you very much. I think the reason why I choose to be a lawyer in the future, I choose to pursue this career, is different from uh, choosing to become a pianist and a surgeon, is because um, there was one time that I think this kind of career is the one that best fits me. I am a sort of a debater in my early days, and I have this kind of technique in order to pursue this career. And that is the practical reason why I think this is why that this career is best, best fits me. And secondly, is because personally I have watched a movie called A time to kill and it was about a case of where uh, a black girl got raped and the only lawyer who stepped forward to fight for her is a white lawyer and the, the whole process is very complicated but what I see from that story is that um, I'm very interested in human rights and I want to argue for those people who have their rights trampled and their freedom um, uh, how to say, stealed away. And if I could be that lawyer, although sometimes I may have to go against my will and argue for a murderer, a raper, a criminal, I, ha I will always rem remember that I have taken an oath that I have to do this job and this is my obligation. And I think because of these reasons, I have this passion because I love this job and I have the technique because I'm a debater and a uh, speaker in public situations. And that is why I think this is different from the other choices. That's all. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. If love can be measured in its economic benefits and <laughs> economic disadvantages, is that actually love? And what is love? Okay. Um, thank you for your question first. I think love is something that cannot be really measured quantifiedly. But the reason why I brought up the uh, terms terminology in economics is because it first jumps to my mind when I think about making rational choices. And love is something that makes us become ir irrational. And that is the reason why I apply these two terminologies. But I think for, to answer your question of what love is, personally, I would say that viewing from my parents' view and also looking at different cases around me and from novels and films and movies, I think love is about commitment. It's something, it's responsibility instead of just love at first sight. Because if you believe in love at first sight, you should believe that it will be gone uh, in an instant, instantly away. And because of that, I think um, love is something that should be taken at heart. It's not just physical attraction, because at one day it will die out. But what makes love uh, goes forever, goes on forever, is this kind of responsibility that we have to shoulder on our uh, shoulder. And it's something that we should not be just given away instantly. And that is what what I think is love. That's all. Thank you.